Hello everyone, uh, my name is Saurabh Agarwal from the Informatica Cloud Product Management Team and today I want to talk about a feature that we released in January 2020 Cloud Application Integration Release. Uh, with this feature you can define uh, inputs for a process and it's very useful because uh, if you can define inputs for a process you can define unit tests for a process. Uh, definitely helpful for a developer. So let's talk about this feature. So now user has the capability to create, read, update and delete uh, these tests or the inputs in context of a process and they can do so using a friendly UI that gives them all the options uh, to perform these actions and they can choose the fields, they can uh, give uh, the test a name, they can define multiple tests, they can edit a test and they can do a bunch of other stuff as we will see in the video shortly. Uh, user has the choice to run uh, all of these tests as a test suite uh, before they move it to a QA environment. Uh, developer may want to perform uh, multiple tests on their own implementation and uh, in eventually they end up building a lot of tests and they can choose to run a single test or they can choose to run the whole test suite at any point in time good part here is that they can do, do so from the process designer itself without leaving the confines of uh, Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services platform. Uh, earlier they would have done the same thing uh, by going to uh, a REST client or a SOAP client for example Postman where they would run a test and then seek back a response. Um, now they can persist the same information uh, within uh, the process designer for a process. Uh, when you run these uh, test uh, one test or multiple test or the entire test suite uh, it will create its own process instance uh, which is available like any other process uh, instance uh, under processes listing with this it's very easy for developer to uh, debug if there is a problem and these inputs or developer unit test are uh, part of the process metadata and so they are persisted during export input process as well uh, before I move into demo, uh, <coughs> I also want to talk about some of the resources that we have available here. Uh, so with this feature, we have uh, accompanying documentation available as you can see the links here. Uh, so please use them to your advantage. Uh, you can always uh, leverage the uh, rich and vibrant cloud application integration community where you can seek information uh, on a specific uh, problem that you are looking forward to fix. Uh, you can ask questions on community and you can search for relevant content. So with that let me move on to the demo. This is our Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services login screen. So let me log in. I already have created a process uh, that I want to uh, use for the demo. The process name is CAI process demo. Let me talk about the process first, what the process does. So in this process, user is asked to provide two pieces of information, an item name and item count, uh, trying to place an order. Uh, item name and item count are text fields. These fields are fed into uh, another service, which is the get inventory details service. This service takes the field name, takes the item name, and then gives out uh, information as to if the item is found or if the item is available then the details of the item. If the item is available, it will find the cost price of the item, it will perform a multiplication with the count uh, of uh, the units that were requested for this item and then eventually update the status and the transaction cost. In case the item is not found, it will set up a status that the item was not found. So it's a very simple process. Uh, the, mo uh, the basic thing to note here is that it takes two input fields. You will also notice that uh, there are other fields which have been used here as temporary fields. Uh, total cost is a process object and that rounded price is a text field. Now where you can find uh, the capability to define uh, the unit test, well, if you go to the actions menu here, you will see that you have an option called run using. If you were to click on run using, you are presented with this new UI. Uh, in this new UI, you already see that uh, we don't have any test available right now, but you have the means available to define any new test. 
Um, as we noticed before, uh, the input for this process were the item name and item count text fields. So you have uh, the capability to define a new test and fill in the values for this. For example, let's say I fill in the value as item 1 and let's say the count is 2. I can choose to fill the value either as a JSON or I can fill it as an XML. Okay, And I can save these tests. I can delete a test and I can perform validation on this test. So let me save this test. When I perform a save on this test, it's asked me for the process input test case name. So I'm going to be giving it the name of item name, which is item 1, and save it. And once I do that, I get to see this listed under the drop down here. And I can define more tests. So, so let's do that. Um, let's define some more tests. And you can click on the new input button here to define new test, at which point you would be presented a new screen to define the name of the process input. Uh, let's say the name is item 2. Save it. And then fill in the values here. Item 2. And the count is, let's say, save it and this also gets listed here now let's define one more test new input let's call this foo save it and then define the field values here so it's foo and the item count is let's say 5 so now we have three tests available item 1, item 2 and foo with their respective values. If you wanted to use a process object uh, to define your process input, you could have done that. You just click on the process object here. Uh, as we see, there's only one available here, total cost. And you can click on add and get the values here. In our case, we don't require, so we'll not use it. But in case you need to use it, you have the ability to uh, use them here as well. Okay. So with that done, uh, let's run all the, the test input that we have. So we have three here. So let's say run all and starts the process execution. Now as you would notice here, uh, there is one successful execution. So we had three tests. Each of these tests created their own process execution. Uh, one of them succeeded. Uh, the other two failed to execute. So let's go and look at the process listing. I can very well click on the successful execution to directly go and uh, to directly go to the process execution so let's do that notice that uh, the the, pro the process execution ID ends in 096 click on OK go to my processes tab Uh, you would notice here that 096 is the one which succeeded and there were other two which failed uh, you would notice them here so let's look at the successful one which is 096 it's already open here uh, you will see the check marks here to uh, indicate the uh, the flow of execution like you see for any other normal process uh, you also see the input fields available here the input field that we passed here was item 2 and the item count was 4 uh, get inventory details returned back the that the item was found and it found got, got the values of the item and eventually it performed uh, its normal operation you would notice that you are able to see the the variable values at every point in time for example the temporary field here the rounded price uh, the value is 20 performs a multiplication and then eventually assigns it to output the output being 2 uh, status which says compute successfully and the transaction code which is 80 because we had four count uh, of the unit item 2 and we had uh, each unit costing 20 uh, the item uh, the transition cost is 80 now let's look at the failed or the faulted processes so let's look at the faulted one let's look at this one As you would notice that the foo item was not found here and so it failed and faulted. There is one more point to note here uh, is that 
if you were to export this process so let's do that download the export package here and look at the content of the package you would notice that the test data is preserved um, across export import uh, this would be available here the test foo the test item 1 and the test item 2 so it becomes very easy for developer to uh, persist this test from development to QA and this can really become your regression test suite. So that's all I had today. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Have a good day.